when I started programming more than a decade ago, I had only two options to choose for a database. It was either MySQL or Oracle. The trade-offs were very simple. Do I have the memory to install an Oracle instance inside my PC or can I use MySQL to do the same function? These were the trade-offs which I used to remember while choosing a database. However, over a period of time, there was more need for a database to be more efficient and consistent to perform our day-to-day -day tasks. So we ended up creating so many databases and now we are in a confusion in choosing which database to use when. In this video, we are going to see what is CAP theorem and how it can help you in choosing a database for your architecture. Let's get started. I'll just walk you through the agenda so that you can decide whether to watch this particular video or not. So initially we are going to see what is CAP theorem. Later on we are going to see the trade-offs in choosing a database by understanding in-depth use cases with real life examples and databases using the CAP theorem. Finally we are going to see what is beyond CAP theorem and is CAP theorem sufficient for us to choose a database. I've also mentioned the timelines in the description. In case you want to skip a particular section, you can directly jump to that particular section. So what is CAP theorem? CAP stands for Consistency, Availability and Partition Tolerance. The CAP principles were initially formulated by Eric Brewer in 1999. And most of the modern databases follow this. And that's what we believe. In. The CAP theorem also says that you can choose only two of the three principle in order to create a database. So for example, if I use availability and consistency, I cannot get partition tolerance. Same way if I use consistency and partition tolerance in creating a database, I cannot achieve availability. Let's understand each of these terms because some of these terms may not be the same with whatever you understood these terms with. The first one is partition tolerance. So what is a partition tolerance? Imagine there is a distributed data store. Here I'm just showing two databases. Both these are getting synchronized and they are connected together. There are some consuming applications or users who are retrieving data from these databases. And one of the user is getting data from one of the node. The other user is getting data from the other node. And they both are synchronized by network wiring. And the data is replicated across all the users. So whatever is stored in the data store, it's the same and it's seen by both users. And they all can read and write. Imagine there is a network partition. Network partition in the sense, there is a network break or there is no connection between the data stores or the nodes. This particular scenario where there is a break between different nodes in a distributed data store is called partition tolerance. So partition tolerance is nothing but no data replication for a particular node or maybe group of nodes. I call it isolated data. So that way your database is isolated from other databases in the distributed system because there is a partition tolerance. The next key term to understand is consistency. In order to understand consistency, let's pick up the same example. If you notice closely, every user gets the same data from the data store irrespective of the node which they are querying from. This is called as consistency. So at a point in time, if multiple users query a data store, they will be getting the same data. That's what is consistency. And I call it same data. Moving on to availability. Let's take the same example. And both the users are going to read and write in the data store. And they are connected to different nodes. Imagine there is a partition tolerance. Now, like I said earlier, when there is a partition tolerance, the data is not synced between these nodes. Now, what happens when user in the left side updates the data store? The user in the right side is retrieving the data from a different data store, so he won't see the same data. However, the system doesn't fail. So in this case, there is inconsistent data across the network. However, the system did not fail. Though there was a network partition, the system was still available 
to serve the data. This is called as cap availability. This is different from the traditional availability where we call if a system is available for serving requests, then we call it available availability. Here in this example, when a network partition happens in a distributed system, there is data inconsistency across the distributed system. However, the nodes are available. This is what is called as availability. So you can get some data from the distributed data store. Now putting these all together in the cap theorem, consistency stands for same data, partition tolerance stands for isolated data, and availability stands for some data. Now the cap theorem states that you can choose only two of these. Now let's look at the trade-offs we get by choosing one over the other with some real examples. The first use case which we are going to see is consistency and availability. This is the most traditional way of using consistency and availability in a system. If you still remember the example which I told in the start of the session about MySQL and Oracle, I always had a single data store where I was querying data from. Let's think of the same as an example. I have an application which is running in a server and I have a database. So I'm going to retrieve data from that particular database. There is also a secondary database which is synchronizing data from the primary so that in case of a failure from the primary, I can use the secondary to recover the primary. This is what we call as a relational database. Let's apply the cap theorem in this particular example. Let's think of the partition tolerance. Now what happens if the partition happens between a primary and the secondary, which basically means primary is not synchronizing data to secondary. This is where partition tolerance happens. And when partition tolerance happens, you are able to achieve consistency and availability, which basically means you can do read and write from the primary database and also multiple users can do a read and write and the data is going to be consistent and also the system is available. So I am able to retrieve at least some data or same data and I'm not getting any isolated data because my primary is there to serve my data and the network partition happened between the primary and the secondary. Notice that the partition is not the table level partition which we do in a relational database. However, here partition tolerance is nothing but network partition, basically disconnection between the primary and the secondary. So whenever I say partition in this whole video, it basically means disconnection between one system to another or one node to another. The classic examples for this kind of a use case is the relational database. Like I said earlier, Postgres is one of them. MySQL is another. IBM's DB2 is another. Microsoft's SQL Server is another relational database. And obviously Oracle is a relational database. All these databases follow consistency and availability. So you always read and write in the master node or the primary node and you can retrieve the data and everything is consistent and also the system is always available. And if there is any partition tolerance, generally there is no partition tolerance because you will be having only one instance running and the backup is basically your secondary and anyway, you're not going to use the secondary for reading and writing the data. That is why relational databases are consistent and available. Now let's apply this into the cap theorem diagram here. Consistency and availability has preference towards same data or some data than the isolated data. And these are the different databases which you can choose from. Now moving on to the next part, which is the consistency and the partition tolerance. Let's take the same example. However, in this case, I'm going to use a multi node cluster, which is basically multiple nodes which are connected to each other. Imagine there are different applications which are retrieving from different nodes. So I have one application which is retrieving from the database, which is from the node one. And I have another application which is retrieving data from node two. And all these nodes are connected to each other and they're all synchronizing data. This is generally called a distributed database or a distributed data store. And both the applications are reading and writing from different nodes. Now what happens when a partition tolerance happens for one particular node? So this particular node here is now segregated or isolated from the cluster. 
in order to achieve consistency we will have to sacrifice availability what do i mean by sacrificing availability i can read the data from any node when there is a partition tolerance however i will not allow the application to write the data into any node because if somebody writes the data into one node the data will not be synchronized into other nodes and there will be data inconsistency so in order to achieve consistency we are sacrificing availability basically availability here means i cannot write anything into the database though the database is available for me to read the data i cannot write anything into the database and the writes are going to be erroring out hence sacrificing availability i am achieving consistency so that all the nodes in the cluster are returning the same data when there is partition tolerance now you can relate to why availability cannot be achieved because if i bring in availability and make the system right then i cannot synchronize the data and the data will be inconsistent in order to achieve consistency i am going to skip the availability and there are a lot of systems which are already doing it here same data or isolated data is preferred over some data basically i don't need any inconsistent data rather i can have isolated data which is always consistent the databases which follow these principles are mongodb apache hbase memcached which is a key value store couchbase and also redis which is another key value store so these are different databases or caches however you want to call them which follows consistency and partition tolerance they give up availability when they cannot achieve consistency so when you are choosing any of these databases make sure that you know that okay you will have to sacrifice availability when you are choosing these databases because you need a consistent system which provides the same data across different nodes now applying this into the diagram here the final piece which is left for us is the availability and the partition let's take the same example where there are two different applications which are reading from two different nodes now again let's apply the partition tolerance one of the node is disconnected from the other nodes now we don't worry about the consistency here so what we are saying is we are not going to restrict people from writing data into the node however the data is going to be inconsistent because one of the system is going to write into a node which is isolated already however the other system is not going to see the same data because the node is isolated so here we are giving up consistency to achieve availability so none of the systems are going to go down however the data is inconsistent and eventually the data can get consistent basically the data get, can get synchronized when the network partition has been resolved however you don't know how long it's going to take so we are giving up consistency for availability when there is partition tolerance like i said earlier you will have to choose only two principle in the cap theorem and this use case here is just picking availability and partition tolerance over consistency now what are the different databases which follow to this kind of a pattern obviously cassandra which is another popular database follows availability over consistency the next popular one is amazon's dynamo db so the amazon's dynamo db is always available you can read and write however there is no guarantee that the data is always consistent across the nodes there is also one more db which is couch db which also falls into the same pattern now let's apply this into the same diagram this completes the whole cap theorem of course this is not a ultimate solution for choosing a database because databases are evolving day by day and we will have to choose a trade off one over other some of the trade offs which we saw here are leaving one of the principle by choosing the other two this will help you in choosing a database and understanding what benefits you can achieve and what can you leave behind now what is beyond the cap theorem looking at the same diagram you can question me is this all correct of course there are modern databases which can be tuned in for achieving different principles for different purposes for example cassandra can be made consistent and partition tolerant by changing some settings so you can 
give up availability if you don't need availability however you need consistency same way for amazon's dynamodb you can choose consistency over availability and tweak those settings similar to how you can do these for cassandra and dynamodb you can have mongodb leave consistency for availability and partition tolerance so you can mix and match these databases because they do have the feature to enable and disable some of these principles when you set them up i hope you were able to understand the cap theorem of course there are some people who think that the cap theorem still doesn't cover every bit of how you can trade off one database over other so there are different white papers for example there is a paper by martin you can read that he is saying that the cap theorems consistency partition tolerance and the availability and partition tolerance doesn't solve all the different problems which we have there is something called pasilk which is basically another theorem which talks about if the partition tolerance occur then you have to choose availability or consistency or else you will have to choose latency or consistency so we already saw partition tolerance with availability or consistency but there are two new things which are introduced one is called latency the other one is called consistency so you will have to choose the system based on two more principles based on the pasilk theorem so this is something which is an advancement to the cap theorem and obviously they are not going to solve every problem but still they help you in understanding and creating granular trade offs and understanding databases by overlaying them with more advanced features again amazon has their own pi theorem which is pattern flexibility infinite scale and efficiency in choosing distributed databases inside amazon web services i hope you were able to understand what is cap theorem if you think this particular video is useful do let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make more videos on system design do let me some of the use cases which you would like to see as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much